Would you believe me if I told you that an old Japanese tradition might be helping honeybees around the world? A traditional ingredient in the Japanese cuisine is getting a lot of attention in the scientific community. But what ingredient am I talking about? If you're a Japanese food lover like I am, you probably already consumed this ingredient without knowing it. I'm talking about seaweed. Yep, do you know that little thing they use to wrap sushi called nori? Yes, that thing is made of seaweed. Another example is wakami. Yes, that delicious Asian salad is also made of seaweed. Seaweeds are large marine algae that leave attached to rocks and other hard substrate in coastal areas. Their composition varies greatly depending on the species' time of collection and habitat. Seaweed contains vitamins, proteins, and minerals. They provide more than a daily requirement of vitamin A, B1, and B12. They can have tons of proteins depending on the species. For example, high levels of proteins can be comparable to those found in high-protein vegetables such as soybeans, lentils, and peas. Even though it cannot be considered as a main source of energy, the nutritional aspect of it is very interesting, but it is not the thing that is getting attention in the scientific literature. For example, polysaccharide, fatty acids, pigments, lectins, alkaloid, and many other compounds found in this algae have proven antimicrobial activity, showing potential targets for important human pathogens. Seaweed, therefore, is not only a good nutritional option, but it also helps in the fight against diseases. But what about honeybees? Here is where things get more interesting. In 2020, researchers from the USDA evaluated the microalga Arthrospira platensis, another seaweed commonly known as spirulina, as a pollen substitute for honeybees. The nutritional analysis indicated that spirulina is rich in essential amino acids and a wide variety of functional lipids commonly found in pollen. When they fed the spirulina to bees in laboratory conditions and compared it with natural pollen and other controls, they found that bees consuming spirulina had heavier thorax and elevated fat body mass comparable to the levels of natural pollen. These are two strong indicators of better bee health. But what about honeybee diseases? In 2015, researchers showed that one polysaccharide extracted from porphyridium was able to decrease both parasite load and mortality of honeybees infected by the fungus Nosema serrani. This indicates that components in this seaweed can counter against a powerful fungal infection in honeybees. Hive Alive is the first company to take advantage of the interesting properties of seaweed in order to help honeybees. This got my attention after several YouTube channels started reporting interesting stories about the product. So if you know me, I dove into the scientific literature to see if there is any evidence supporting the stories of the internet. And to my surprise, there is. In 2015, independent researchers set up several groups of honeybee colonies and followed the long-term effect of Hive Alive. During a period of two years, the researchers compared the effect of bees being fed with Hive Alive and bees being fed with regular sugar only. They measured the size of the colonies and also the infestation of an important honeybee pathogen, Vitimorpha serrani, best known as Nosema serrani. Long story short, bees fed with Hive Alive increased the bees' population by 89% and interestingly, reduced the Nosema serrani spore by 57%. It is great to see multiple independent studies published in scientific peer-reviewed journals pointing to a positive direction. This is rare in the beekeeping industry and should be seen as a step in the right direction. The beekeeping industry is still very small compared with other industries and need many more of these studies bringing science-based solutions to the market. And companies like Hive Alive are pushing the industry to the right direction with scientific studies to support their claims. It is important to emphasize that this study is a field trial, which means that the bees were kept in their natural environment in colonies, not only laboratory conditions using cage studies. 
The experimental design was good, and I don't see any major problem in the study. If there is one problem in my view is the sample size. 20 colonies per group is a very small sample size considering the number of variables that honeybee colonies are exposed in nature. This study combined with so many positive stories directly from beekeepers about the product make me confident that we are in the right direction here. However, the scientific method demands repetition and unfortunately we only have one peer review trial. I would love to see more trials in the future to confirm these results and the stories from beekeepers. Perhaps my followers at home would like to volunteer their hives so we can conduct a trial together using the power of internet. I would like to thank my patrons on Patreon for their support and you for watching. Inside the Hive.tv, the show about beasts. See you guys next week.